Hello and welcome to the top 10 power characters on Bleach Brave Souls. I've been meaning to make this for some time now, but life keeps getting in the way. And admittedly, sometimes I decide to stream on Twitch instead of working on a video. That said, I am going to try to start putting these out once a week again, though I do apologize for the delay of this and some of the other series. That's my bad. Though, do go follow me on Twitch. And I do want to preface this by saying that this list was actually pretty hard to make compared to the others. I feel like power, more than anything else, has a large variety of characters that just all do different things and are useful in different ways. But you know, I did my best and hopefully you'll enjoy. Now we're starting things off with a really good character, the manga version of Renji, who has a really high SP and frenzy. In addition to that, he also has Havoc at 20, so he's got really good range on his strong attacks. Seriously, like, really good range. And it's actually a really good thing for him because his strong attack 3 is a charge move. When fully charged, it can actually inflict more damage than his special if you build him correctly. And while charge moves aren't normally full screen, thanks to his Havoc, his basically is. Renji also has a strong attack recharge link, so he's able to spam these attacks, and his special while ordinarily dealing regular amounts of damage, does have a slight chance to instantly kill the enemies. Which is always useful, but it's especially useful in Senkaimon, for obvious boss killing purposes. Now I do want to finish this segment off by saying that if you're gonna ask why this Renji's Bankai has a tail and yours doesn't, it's because an update removed it. Something about the lag or something, I don't know. But I always get that question anytime I put him in a video, so I figured I'd go Go ahead and mention it now. Now I know some people are gonna be mad that I put Kenny so high up on the list, and honestly I can kinda get it, dude's a monster in PvP, but this is not a PvP list. That's not to say he's not good in PvE though, he does after all have flurry and poise, and everything he has has a chance to inflict debilitating weakening. This is great since his strong attack 2 is a vortex move that surrounds him, it doubles as a shield so it's great for autoing, and it has a very high chance to inflict weakening. This move is also really good in Senkaimon when you want to weaken a boss before they're able to use their special. That said, you do want to have the proper killer in Senkaimon and that's where this character kind of lags behind. He has a captain killer at 40, which for PvP is amazing, but for PvE not so much doesn't really come up that often, and more and more events are multiplying killers, something he can't really benefit from unless he's up against a captain boss. Now as I mentioned, he is still good in PvE, he can auto a lot of stuff, but he might be a little slower than others. Still his effectiveness in PvE, and his overwhelming strength in PvP, definitely land him a spot on this list, and in our hearts. <laughs> Now next up we have the newest power character, the Halloween version of Grimjow, who if I'm being honest, I think looks kind of ridiculous. That said, he is a good character. He has a really high SP, frenzy, and can inflict debilitating poison on everything, for some reason. Now it's important to note that this character has a boosted strong tech recharge link, which is already really good, because you know, boosted. In addition to that though, he also has Berserker at 20, which is almost the equivalent of him having a strong attack recharge link as well. We're so used to either a character having Frenzy or Berserker, but at least in the past, it was very rare for a character to have both, though it's apparently becoming a thing now since the last 5 SP characters to come out have had both Berserker and Frenzy, and it is actually a pretty big deal. Since stats are really not that relevant anymore, being able to dish out 20% more damage just on your own is actually pretty nice. Aside from that though, he's kind of a generic character. Like most SP characters, he's really useful in PvE, and due to the poison, he's also a pretty good boss killer. Though his strong attacks while having good range hit just a generic number of times, so there is no increased likelihood of inflicting status ailment. <laughs> Next up is the power version of Aizen. If I'm being honest, Grimjaw is definitely better for damage. He's also better for clearing rooms faster, and for that matter, so is Renji. That said, I do find Aizen to be the more useful character to have, because he's actually useful in more areas. He may not deal as much damage as they potentially can, but he does have way better crowd control, and his strong attacks are way more useful. His strong attack 1 is a regular projectile move, but his strong attack 2 is a crawling vortex move that has multiple uses. It rapidly increases the combo, which is great for guild quests and overall damage. And 
and it also greatly increases the chance of inflicting weakening, which also increases the damage. Thanks to the weakening and the pushback effect, it's a good move to use against bosses to avoid getting hit by their special. Something that's useful anywhere, but especially in Senkaimon. Finally, there's a strong attack 3 that's a full screen, which is always nice to have. Now, in addition to this, he also has a useful normal attack. It's unlike any other normal attack string we've seen so far, as the last two attacks are both 360 max strong attacks that fire three projectiles that split off in different directions. It's not enough to actually call him a nat character, but it's certainly useful to have. And at least at the time of this recording, no other character has this. Finally, it's important to note that this character is also completely immune to being frozen, which, you know, is always nice. <laughs> Now remember at the beginning when I said these characters were difficult to place? Well, Ukiora is definitely one of them. This character is pretty well equipped to be good just about everywhere. The only major issue is his killer. He's got a no affiliation killer, which while it is better than a Captain and Espada killer, doesn't come up nearly as often as Soul Reaper, Hollow, or Arankar. Still, it is quite common in Senkaimon, and we do see it from time to time in Inheritance Zones and Droplet Zones. Still, even with a less than stellar killer, Ukiora is a really good character. He's got a really high SP, frenzy, and a fairly interesting kid. He's got a boosted strong attack damage link of 25%, and a charge move for his strong attack 3, which is a pretty dangerous combo. In addition to that, his strong attack 3, his strong attack 1, his special, and his normal attack can all inflict weakening, though it's not debilitating weakening. His strong attack 2, on the other hand, is a boost move, and a very unique one. Not only does it have enhancer, making it last 20 seconds, but it's also a shield move, and it's the only one of its kind. This ability and his strong attacks make him a really good PvE character, since he can support the entire team while also dealing heavy amounts of damage. It also makes him a fairly decent PvP character, because in addition to boosting everyone and giving everyone shields, he actually does have a pretty decent attack string and poise, meaning his attacks cannot be stopped. I still wouldn't say he's top tier, but he can compete, and it also makes him fairly decent at autoing. <laughs> Now next up is the power version of Retsu, a character with a really high attack, as well as a normal attack damage link, and a really high plus 80 bruiser, making her normal attack damage output 100%, basically the equivalent of Flurry. Retsu also has a hollow killer, meaning that you can take advantage of this crazy amount of damage in areas that multiply killers. It also means she's crazy good at autoing, because she's able to take this ability in Inheritance Zones and Droplet Zones. She's also ranged, so she can deal all this from a distance, and her strong attack too is a barrier move. And I feel like there's no reason to explain why that's useful for autoing, or just PvE in general. She's also completely immune to being burned, and her strong attack 3 and her special are able to inflict debilitating laceration. In addition to that, her special also heals the entire party for 60% which is just icing on the cake for this character. Now I am gonna say while she can deal a lot of damage and is good for autoing and PvE in general, she is kind of slower than other characters, as ranged characters typically are. She more than makes up for that in reliability though, and she more than deserves her spot on this list. <laughs> Next on the list is Ginrei Kuchiki, who also has a really high attack and is also a ranged character. Much like Retsu, he also has a hollow killer, but unlike Retsu, he actually has flurry, and he's able to put it to good use since his normal attacks can inflict debilitating paralysis. His strong attack 3 and his special can also inflict debilitating paralysis, though it's important to note that because his normal attack hits twice, and is ranged, it's probably more likely to do it than his strong attack 3, since you can actually spam his normal attack. Now, like most characters with Flurry, this character also has poise, meaning you can actually use him in PvP, though, you know, he's a captain in Noitora, so, you know, you can do the math. Still, it means he can't be stopped in PvE unless you paralyze him, since he has complete immunity to freezing. Both the poise and the freeze immunity make him a lot faster than Retsu for PvE, and while she does have barrier moves, he has a damage reduction soul trait of 20%, so he's also really durable. I'm not gonna lie, this character was a happy surprise. I really like when they make characters from filler arcs, and I definitely wasn't expecting him. <laughs> Ah! 
Next up is probably my favorite character on this list, and actually my favorite power character, the Can't Fear Your Own World version of Nelliel, who like the previous two characters also has a really high attack. Unlike them though, she's not ranged, and she's actually so much faster because of it. Not only does she have poise, meaning she doesn't stagger, but she's got a pretty unique normal attack string lunges her every time she attacks, and vastly increases her range on a normal attack. It also makes her pretty difficult to hit, and that's something that's really useful both in PvE and PvP, where she is also really good. Now despite being a normal attacking character, her strong attacks are actually very useful to her. She's actually got a strong tech recharge link, and they didn't do that for no reason. All of her attacks have a chance to inflict debilitating weakening, and her strong attacks are very likely to do it. Strong attack 1 is a lunge move, and her strong attack 2 is a vortex move that surrounds her. It's really good in PvE and PvP, as it's very likely to inflict debilitating weakening, and it basically doubles as a shield. And there's a strong attack 3 that puts enemies in one spot before hitting them again. It also increases the combo pretty quickly, and it sets up enemies for upcoming attacks. Plus, the strong attacks actually do deal these amount of damage because she has a plus 40 berserker. She's honestly one of the best normal attacking characters this game has put out, and she's definitely one of the fastest. Now next up we have the Thousand Year Blood War version of Toshiro Hitsugaya, who has a really high SP as well as Frenzy, and can inflict debilitating freeze on all of his attacks. Now while other characters on this list are able to use barriers or boost moves, in some cases both, or have the ability to heal or instant kill with their specials, it's kinda difficult to compete with this character's kit. All of his attacks have ridiculous range, from his normal attack thanks to its speed and long reach, to his strong attacks, that despite not having havoc, are still able to reach a very wide area. Area. They're also pretty quick to activate, and because of his strong tech recharge link, you can pretty much spam these attacks. Thanks to all this, he's actually one of the fastest characters in the game to clear a quest with, and it's one of the main reasons he made it this far on the list. Toshiro also has a really good special since it not only inflicts freezing, but also weakens the enemy's defense, which is pretty perfect against the boss. Now for those of you who don't know, he actually once was the king of PvE and PvP. Now obviously nab characters dominate PvP now, so that doesn't exactly hold true anymore but he's still one of the best options to take in PvE, and it's why I'm putting him at number 2 on this list. Now before I get to number 1, here are a few honorable mentions. Halloween Night. どうやら潮気が漂うじゃの。Now at number 1 we have the long waited for manga version of Nemu, who has a really high SP as well as frenzy. In addition to that she also has a plus 20 berserker, meaning her strong attacks automatically do 20% more damage. In addition to this, she's also got a plus 20 havoc, meaning her strong attacks have really good range, to the point that her strong attack 3 is more than a full screen. She's also got decent range on a normal attack since she also has long reach at 20, and she's completely immune to being frozen. This Nemo also comes with an extra sprinter, so she's able to clear raids faster and dodge enemies' attacks easier including boss's specials. Now her kit and abilities I've mentioned so far would have already placed her high on this list, but what really helps put her at number 1 is her special, which grants protection status to anyone who's alive to see it, meaning that if they were to die, they come back with half their health. It's pretty much the ultimate support move, and it's useful literally everywhere in PvE. We did have to wait way longer than I would have hoped to get this character, but it's definitely worth it, as she ended up being the best power character so far. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to the channel. And stay tuned for some more top 10 lists. It should hopefully come quicker than this one.